If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So, Saturday, I promised that I would show you some or how I was going to stitch in um, the signature inclusions into my lap book. So this is what I'm going to do today. Now, this is so far outside my comfort zone, I'm practically speaking a foreign language. So you'll have to bear with me. I will be doing this very steadily and very slowly. It may turn into a very long video, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know how long this video is going to be. So you'll just have to bear with me. We'll get there in the end. So this is the lap book that we created the basic structure with last week. And then the other day I decorated the front cover. Now, these are also the signature sheets that I discussed with you on previous videos. And as you can see, I've already printed them double-sided so I've printed literally on both sides, trimmed them out and then folded them into signatures. So four page signatures will give you a 16 page, sorry, four pages will give you one stitched in a 16 page inclusion. And I'm going to stitch in three today. I do have five sets but I think it's going to be probably enough to show you how to do it three times or you'll see me doing it three times for each signature inclusion that you'll be able to get it. And I can always add in the other two at a later date at the other side of the lap book. Now the other thing was I was trying to decide whether to do it on the left or the right. I'm right handed. So I think it's probably going to be better if I stitch these in on this side because that's the way I would comfortably write as opposed to doing it at this side and writing in the middle of the book because I've also got some pages that I'm going to be decorating and putting tags in and on this side I may create one of those kind of full Midori um, elastic kind of affairs where I can then slide them in and take them out again. So these will be stitched in and fixed. These will probably end up being on elastics so I can slide in and take out. But also I've got these pages that I can decorate and create kind of art journal pages inside. So I've got some decorated art journal pages as well as a practical writing and notepad that I can also take. So if I do the Midori kind of style at this side, then I can cut some watercolour cardstock and carry that with me so I can do maybe some art journaling in there too. So it's kind of a hybrid of a traveller's notebook, an art journal, and just somewhere for you to keep and write down notes and that kind of stuff. So there you go. Right, so we've already cut out, as I said, the signatures and folded those. So what we need to do to prepare is we need to punch some holes in where we're going to stitch through. So just for the time being, I'm gonna put that to one side and then I'm going to bring in this template that I've created. So I've created the long piece through the middle. Actually I shouldn't have taken that away, should I? Because I need to explain exactly where that where that fits in. So this, and I've already cut one out, will help guide to put your holes in your spine down that bit there. So that's the thin one. The longer one, or the wider one, is for your signatures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up, so I've already creased it down the middle and I'm going to drop that into the centre and as you can see it's the same height so it's going to be quite easy 
to pierce our holes in. So I've got a pricking mat. Now if you haven't got a pricking mat, you can just do this on a folded up um, bath towel or some um, kitchen towel, some paper kitchen towel, or even an old mouse mat. And I'm going to puncture through the center hole. Now that should have gone through all of the sheets. So you can see I've gone through all of the sheets there. And I'm going to do that for all three of the signatures. So the next one. Grab my pricking tool, my pokey tool. If you don't have a pokey tool like this, you can use the needle that you're going to be using for your stitching. Now I've got a set of darning needles here. Um, I just got these from eBay. You can get book binding needles, which are very, very inexpensive, but I bought darning needles. These are the sort of things that you would use for mending socks, or used to mending socks. I had a, I got just this set of 10 and they were very, very inexpensive. But you could also use your pokey tool. So there you go, so that's the second set done. And then the third set, lay that back in the middle again. Just make sure we've got it in the middle or near as we can. I nearly swore then. Not badly, but nearly. Okay, so three holes all ready to go in all three sections. Now, before we go any further, I've used this template, I've created this template. You may find it very, very useful. So what I've done is I've made this template available on my blog, so which you can see in um, the description area below the video, there will be a link to my blog, which is my website, then my blog. In the post for this video, you will find a link to a PDF document, which has this in the middle. Now, I've done this on A4. The document is A4. If, you have, if you're in the States and you're using 8.5 by 11, it's fine. You can print it out, no problem, in the center of that, no page scaling, and don't do fit to page, just fit it, auto rotate and center, and it will fit in the middle of your eight and a half by 11. I've done it portrait, so it'll print out, not a problem. So you can all use this, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's a freebie from me, just to help you if you've already bought the sheets and wanting to do this for yourself. Right, so now that's out of the way. Three sets of signatures, all with the holes in. Now I need to do the spine. This is the scary bit. The scary bit for me anyway. Okay, so I did have a repositionable tape runner that I was going to just run down the middle so that this wouldn't move. And when I've come to grab it, it's disappeared. So three guesses where that's ended up in somebody's garage. And he's not here today. He's doing his first steampunk show of the year in Whitby, the historic town of Whitby. So, right, so again, as you can see, I'm just placing the point onto the hole and then I'm just going to punch you through. And then I'm going to do the middle one. And then the middle one again. I'm trying to do it very gently. And then I'm going to do the outer side. And then that one. So that should now be all three at the top. And then I'm going to do the other two. And then the last two at this side. So 
So I remove my little template and there I've got my three sets of holes all the way through, front and the back. So we're pretty much ready to go. So I can take my pricking mat and put that away. Okay, so how am I going to stitch these in? Well, you've seen the needles. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use some green garden twine. I'm not going to use elastic or um, book binding thread, nylon or wax thread. Because it's kind of a thick spine, I'm going to, do, I'm going to use this green twine. Now, as far as lengths are concerned, I'm going to stitch each one in separate and I'm going to cut around about two lengths. He says trying to get the top off his scissors. I'm going to cut around about two lengths of the twine. Oh, the magnetic as well, look. There's an added bonus. Of the twine, which will give me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm trying to do it. Now, I'm not going to do a really complicated stitch because this is the first time I've done it, so I'm not going to do kettle stitch, I'm not going to do Coptic stitch or anything like that, I'm only going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch because none of these kind of are, I don't think it warrants it for this kind of journal. So I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to push through the middle. Now you can do this in the reverse way if you want. You can, you're going to end up with either the, the tail ends where you've tied them off, either in the middle or on the outside spine. I don't like them in the middle. I would prefer them on the outside spine so that I can add a couple of charms in there or even put a button on it if I wanted to. If they're in the middle, you can't do that because it's just going to get in the way. And I like this, I'd like, prefer it to be tidy on the middle and then all uh, loose on the outside. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start he says, see I nearly did it wrong then, <laughs> so I'm going to start on the outside, push through and then I'm going to sew up into the middle. Oh, come on. There we go. So that's the first one through. Okay. So I'm then going to go back through the top. Now don't forget we're in the middle. We're going into the middle hole. So I'll turn it round and coming back, returning back through the middle one at the top. Okay. So at this stage, you can adjust the lengths, pull it through until you're happy, which I am there. Okay, and then we're going to come right the way down to the bottom. I'm going to go through middle hole there. excuse me and then we're going to go through that top hole in our pamphlet come on there we go and that way we can tighten up as we need to and then I'm going to go back out through that centre hole again, like so, and then I can take my needle off, and then we can tighten that up, we can pull it, tighten it, as much as we want, and then I'm going to take one piece of twine, either side of that string that we've pulled in, and that's where I'm going to tie it off. And I'll do a double knot. And 
and then we can turn it over and there's our first one stitched in. That ain't going nowhere. Look at that. See, I've not embarrassed myself. I thought I would. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the process now. So again, I'm going to grab the twine, give myself about two lengths. About there. Snip it off. Thread it through my needle. So you don't even have to tie it off. That's the beauty. How cool. So let's grab the next signature. So we'll do this side now. So that's going to be the outer side. So up through the middle. Now this is where having some clips might come in useful. So a couple of little bulldog clips. I'm just going to try and find mine. Well, I know where they are, it's just for getting hold of them. Right, a couple of these. Just to keep it out of the way. Just sling a couple of those on. I'm sure you've got some. Look at that. I went and had a look at those and I've got loads of these just sitting there. Oh my goodness. Talk about not being able to see for looking. That's my video nerves. Hoping that I don't make a complete and total mess up with you lot watching. Right, so where were we? Okay, we were halfway through that middle. So I'm going to open that up, grab the needle, and then just gently guide it. So I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing as well. So straight through the middle, making sure I've got that the right way up. Notes to self, and then pull it through, just like we did before. Now it doesn't really make any difference if you go to the top that way or you go to the bottom, as long as you do it the you know the same way that you did before. Let's just move that twine. Then you're going to be laughing, absolutely laughing. So back out. And then just flip that over right the way down to the bottom. Just push it through a little bit and then we can line up that last set of holes like so. That's not quite in the middle but what the heck. So are we tight? We are tight. As tight as we can be. Or just about. Just feed that under. And then did I give myself enough thread? I don't think I did. I'll just pull that back through about there. Tighten that up. Come on. This is the beauty about doing it this way, is you can literally just pull it and tighten it. We're back through that centre hole and back out. Flip it over. Grab the thread, which is it? It's that one there. That's the one. So we need to get under either side. Just make sure it's not baggy. We're happy. I think I'm happy. Making sure I've got the right one. And then we can tie that off like we did before. And then one more time. One more time. No, I'm not going to start singing, don't worry. Okay, I'm just going to trim those little tails off there. I'm just going to leave those long for the time being. 
Right, let me just flip that back over now. So, we now have two signatures in place. You see how they lay flat regardless? So let's just clip those two together at this side so that way the other holes are done. And it doesn't take long. Once you've actually got the flow of in and out and in and out and in and out, we're fine. So let's get the string ready and get sorted ready for this last set of signatures or the last signature set. Now the battery is about to die on my camera so I'm going to just drop that there put the needle there and I'm going to go put the kettle on while my camera just recharges a little bit and I'll be right back okay so while that was charging I thought I'd just add a few little charms onto the um, straggly bits that hang off well I've said charms I've added a button and just a little kind of clock and then just trim those off a little bit so you can decorate these little edges however you want to there we go so we we're going to do the last set of holes I've threaded my needle ready made sure I've got plenty of string or twine left to go I've got a couple more charms out and another button just in case I want to do the same thing again so before we start I'm just going to clip off make sure they stay out of the way and then grab the needle so we have the last set of holes push that through grab the note paper line it up with the middle I think we may have separated slightly. That's better. Let's just stop that from happening again. And I line up that middle hole. There we go, straight in this time. All the way through. Of course, if you do this and you have a smaller, thinner needle than that I've used, it makes it just that tad easier. And then it will go out this way. Let's see if I can find. There we go. There's the hole. They're actually pretty easy to find. And I'm not really using that much force. And then all the way up to the top again. Let's get rid of that clip. And line the holes up straight through and then before I go all the way back through the middle he says so I just want to tighten that up a little bit just pull it as taut as I can don't forget you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want um, there we go. You don't want it to rip and tear your paper. It shouldn't do, but just in case. Because with you, well, because I've used thicker cardstock, it should be quite sturdy. Okay, so. Pull that tight, pull that tight and get rid of that needle now. Just need to flip that over and then thread that underneath. The top and bottom and then 
then just do exactly the same as before, tie it off, give it a couple of knots and then if you want to you can then add another charm, this one's a little Chinese coin, if you want to you can let that hang a little bit lower. And just tear that off. And there you go, and you can just remove the excess. off and then we can close all the signatures off. So there we go, so you've got one signature, two signature, three signatures now permanently inside your lap book and a little bit of decoration on the side too. So I hope I didn't make too much of a fool out of myself with my very very basic stitching so just in case you wanted to see that first on there we go we now have all those fantastic note pages stitched permanently into our lap book and we've got some nice kind of dangly charms just hanging off the side which you can do whatever you want with so while I've got that like I said I've got two more sets of signatures but for the time being what I'm going to do is I have a piece of seam binding which I've cut to the right length which you've probably seen already and I'm just going to thread that over the top he says come on and then drop that down into the middle So I've now got a piece of ribbon that side so I can then take my signatures that I haven't yet stitched and I can feed those underneath. So I've got two sets of those. Feed that under. So I've now got those held in with that piece of seam binding. What, no stitches? Just like that. And those that are permanently stitched. And of course, if you wanted to, you could do it that formidable way by adding the holes through with either your cropper dial and then feed your elastic through if you want to or you can just keep them to one side um, and then wait until you've got your art journal pages that you can add to and make it just that little bit more exciting so there you go so i will be continuing to add stuff to this lap book it will start getting thicker and thicker, thicker -er and thicker -er, he says. Just trying to push everything. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it's starting to get thicker and thicker and thicker until we'll have to try and find a way of organising and putting in some kind of band to try and keep it shut. How exciting. All good fun. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.